Congressman, thanks very much for being with us. What are your thoughts on what we have seen at the United States Capitol today? Well, it's absolutely crazy. You know, I spent almost a decade as an undercover officer in the CIA in dangerous places like Afghanistan and Pakistan. And this is the kind of stuff that you saw over there. And, you know, for all the young kids that may be watching tonight, this is not how we behave. This is not how we operate. This is not what you do uh, when you're when you're upset. Um, you know, the, the, the visions of people going through the Capitol and breaking things and the fact that somebody got shot um, inside the Capitol is, is, is absolutely hor horrific. And un unfortunately, um, everybody who has not de-escalated this situation, um, the president needs to de-escalate this, all the other members that were not de-escalating this, everybody is responsible. And for over six years, you know, I've, I've seen some of my colleagues, you know, talk tough uh, when things like this were happening overseas um, when it was 6,000 miles away, but we're seeing this right on, on, our, on our doorsteps. And it's unfortunate, but this is something I do know, that in times of crisis, America is, is at its best. And I think this is going to be an opportunity for everybody to step back and realize that way more unites us than divides us as a country and expect our leaders to use their words to inspire and not fear monger or in, incite violence. Well, tell us about the security on Capitol Hill. The president himself said this protest would be wild, he said, when he encouraged people to come to D.C. a couple of weeks ago. Based on your experience uh, as a former CIA officer, was law enforcement prepared for this? Well, everyone's going to Monday morning, Monday morning quarterback this, but let's make sure it's getting under control now. Um, it seems to have gotten the Capitol complex under control. And, and you got to remember, when we talk about the Capitol complex, it's not just the Capitol, which we're seeing in all the videos, but there is a number of office buildings um, on, on either side of the Capitol. So it's a pretty large, large footprint. Um, we have protests almost every single day, and I, I think some of the tactics, techniques, and procedures um, that were in place are going to have to be reviewed uh, once we get done. But what's most important right now is get that facility under control so that the House and the Senate can get back to the work. Uh, we cannot let uh, the mob come in and stop the, the work of democracy, and I'm glad that there is a bipartisan agreement uh, to finish their work tonight. And, and that requires uh, police and, and law enforcement um, to get things under control. And you're seeing not just Capitol Police, you're seeing D.C. police, and you're seeing police uh, from all the different areas, from Virginia and, and Maryland, and coming in um, to help. And they have a tough job, uh, but I'm confident that they're getting this, this under control and that Congress is going to be able to finish their work. You were one of the very few Republicans who spoke out against President Trump's rhetoric during your tenure. What would you like to see him do now? I'd like to see him go to camera live and say, stop this. Uh, this is not the way things should be. Uh, don't continue to, to expand the pound on falsehoods. Uh, this was one of the most secure elections in, in, in our history. And there is going to be a, a, a peaceful transfer of power on, on January 20th. And in, 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 like all previous presidents, um, should be supportive of that. And for those that are upset that their person uh, didn't win, guess what? Work harder at the next election, right? This is how uh, th this process works. And, and it's unfortunate that there is such a degradation of trust, uh, trust in elected officials, trust in our institutions, like those who count the votes. There's a lack of trust um, in, in the media. And what is happening right now our adversaries, our enemies are taking advantage of this right now. Um, countries like the leadership in China and Russia are, are, are laughing right now, and they're pointing to some of our allies and say, is this the, the folks that you're trying to lead? I think Boris Johnson recently tweeted um, you know, something basically that, that said, America, you're the example for the rest of the world. Uh, start acting like this. And we, America has become an exceptional nation, not because of what we have taken, but it's because of what we have given. And we got to show uh, that we're able to disagree with, without being disagreeable. I want to go back to something you touched on a moment ago. So many of your former colleagues um, not only haven't called out the president, but they have supported and continue to support his baseless claims about there being widespread voter fraud. Why do you think that is, Congressman? 
Look, you'd, you'd have to ask them, but if I were to theorize, I, I think it's, you know, looking to future uh, electoral activity. A um, couple of things I learned when I was on in the CIA, get off the X. That means where something's going down, that's the X. Get off of it as quickly as possible. Uh, don't walk in, okay. into an ambush. And number three, always try to de-escalate a situation. And, uh, and unfortunately, there's been a number of people that have escalated and, and put fuel on, on this fire in order to gain, you know, a, a political points, in order to get more clicks on, on their social media, to be able to raise a little bit more money on, on email traffic. Words matter. And we're seeing that, you know, we're seeing how those kinds of words, instead of inspiring, uh, can lead uh, to this kind of violence um, that is happening on the doorstep. Of, of the people's house. And it's, it's really unfortunate. And I hope we take this as, as a moment to, to recognize um, that we need to de-escalate this and, 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 again, get back to the work of solving some of these major challenges, right? We, we have a lot of big issues. We're still dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, we're in a, a geopolitical struggle with the government, the, the Communist Party of China on leadership and advanced technology. These are some of the problems that are going to impact our every single day, and we can't focus on this uh, when you have this kind of rhetoric that leads to this type of behavior. What uh, is your reaction, uh, Congressman, to the position of your fellow Republican in Texas, Senator Ted Cruz, uh, someone who has made clear that he had planned to object to the certification of the Electoral College vote count? Um, what is it that um, your reaction to that decision and that position is? Well, my reaction is I never would have thought I'd see a conservative using a, a tactic or following that of a super progressive California a senator. And I'm speaking when this happened, uh, I believe it was uh, uh, eight years ago, um, when Barbara Boxer uh, criticized and, and tried to do this thing. She was a very liberal progressive uh, senator from California. I wouldn't expect a, a, a person who believes in, in states' rights and trying to usurp uh, the role of, of the states, right? This is. Um, you know, I, I, I know something about tough elections, right? I know something about tight elections. Uh, my last uh, election, I won by a couple hundred votes, and it wasn't decided until 20 days after the actual uh, election day. And these men and women throughout the country that are involved in tabulating the votes it, take their job very seriously. And in and, and, and these cases that, that many of my colleagues are talking about, or former colleagues are talking about, the vote, let's take Georgia, it was counted three times, one of those um, by hand. And we, we had one of the most secure elections. This process that was supposed to happen today, which I hope continues tonight, is, is really more about pomp and circumstance and saying, hey, this is the number that we got from the states. Um, and I hope that after this, what happened earlier today, um, that we get back to that tonight. There have been a number of people pointing out a much more aggressive response by law enforcement to the Black Lives Matter protests over the summer compared to the treatment of protesters who breached the Capitol. Is that a fair criticism in your eyes? I, I think so. We're going to have to look at, you know, what was done in advance, how much planning had been done. I know there were there were helicopters circling the city um, at a protest a, a couple of months ago. Uh, why that same level of support um, wasn't here, I, I do not know. Um, you know, and so these are all valid questions that are going to that are going to be asked. Um, after um, they're able to take control of this and, and see Congress do, do their vote. Uh, you have to remember, this is, uh, I, give, I think, day three or day four for a lot of members of Congress. Uh, they're not used to that. That's they right. still may not know how to get from their office uh, to the floor. And, and, and so mm -hmm. for this and a lot of the staff that's there, this is all brand new for them. Right. Well, uh, you have been out of Congress just a few days. What is next for you? <laughs> Uh, well, 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 good question. Um, you know, I'm exploring that now. For, for, for me, the goal is to stay at that intersection of national security, uh, technology, and, and public policy. Uh, there is, you know, when, when you look at, at something like artificial intelligence and 5G, uh, these are technologies that are going to define 
our economy uh, for the future. And I want to make sure that it's English and the dollar that continue uh, to drive uh, our economy and the, and the global economy. And so how I can continue to work in that, I'm going to keep talking about some of these issues. So I'm excited. I'm lucky and fortunate that I have options in the middle of a pandemic um, with the, the amount of unemployment that we're seeing. And, and so I'm fortunate and blessed to have that, but I'm looking forward uh, to, to, to exploring. And one of the first things I did is grow my beard back out. So uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> All right. Please keep us posted. All right. Former Texas Republican Congressman Will Hurd. Congressman, thanks very much for your time. Of course, my pleasure.